is Undead Labs doing? Ah, I bet some of you may have thought this was a rant piece about State of Decay 2 and the current state of its post-release content seeming slim. Well, I gotcha. That's actually not today's topic of interest, but it is the question we are trying to speculate on. And I actually don't agree that Undead Labs have slacked when it comes to their content release schedule. And I'll explain the reasoning within this, as well as try to bring light to a larger speculative discussion on what is this developer's next big move, and is it State of Decay 3 or something even bigger, and more ambitious taking its place? Also, what is the potential that Undead Labs have already moved the majority of their resources to their next new first party title. The question is simple, what is Undead Labs doing? The execution of understanding and explaining that question isn't so simple, because the answer is much bigger and more varied than the question itself. For just about the entirety of this channel's coverage life, we knew what the team was working on and could speculate on its potential, but as of this year, with the future content pretty much being announced and known about, with very little speculative discussion for what happens next for Undead Labs when pertaining to State of Decay 2 and future installments or new IP, this discussion leads us on a true journey of discovery I didn't understand the magnitude of and thought was stuck in the silent abyss of future unknown plans. I wanted to explore this not just because of being a Sod fan. I'm a fan of this team and a fan of their ambition. I just also happen to love their first franchise and want to ask and explore the question, what are they doing now? So let's begin. Mid last year at Microsoft's E3, Undead Labs was one of many acquired studios by the publisher for first party exclusivity rights. That's a big get for Microsoft and Xbox. But the bigger thing to take away is what Undead Labs got out of becoming a seminal studio in Xbox's next generation exclusive push, with Microsoft's massive funding at their disposal. Undead Labs are in a unique position to finally create the game they have always wanted to create, and the game concept many longtime fans have always wanted to see and experience. One thing I wanted to add before that was Undead Labs was one of the first developers to have their exclusive put onto Microsoft's Game Pass platform, which to many fans may seem to be a backwards way to monetize your game, since that seems like you're giving new players to the franchise the incentive to pay next to nothing to play the game and experience the franchise for the first time. This move was the vital key to securing the future and life of Undead Labs. I bring this up for good reason. Why did they do this? Well, my best guess is that this practice was made possible by Microsoft striking some type of funding deal with Undead Labs in their future projects. Obtaining the game for Game Pass and trading off the potential unknown financial risk of the game falling short of predicted sales, which I believe to be the case with SOD 1. Instead of going back to the old sell your game and fund your next one model, they took a better deal and got secure funding from Microsoft for the future of Undead Labs and also their IP's continuation on the next gen. But this is all speculation to be completely clear. I'm no developer, and I'm certainly no publisher. Well, outside of the YouTube videos I publish, I can really only go off of industry trends, knowledge, and understanding. I don't know for certain, but I choose to create this to really gauge where this line of thinking stands, and I appreciate having an audience that allows me to explore these unknown territories. If you guys have been with the channel for a while, you may know that we were leading in many topics and ideal State of Decay 2 features and speculation that ended up being factual. This is done with your participation in the discussion which builds a fairly accurate consensus that I am able to then try to understand, but I do have to say that it isn't 100% known, and we are in uncharted waters at this point. Within the industry there is a hidden undercurrent of business many gamers are not aware of. All I can do is follow the coverage series and the same instinct that created it. But with that portion out of the way, let's move back to the special title that Undead Labs was originally built to create. This game was once called Class 3, and this title was Jeff Strain's first undead endeavor, after his departure from Blizzard Entertainment, where there he worked on MMOs like World of Warcraft, and in this extreme example of an industry innovator, also even co-founded ArenaNet, who developed the majorly successful successful role-playing MMO called Guild Wars. Jeff Strain is the founder and lead executive within Undead Labs now, but I gotta say, he has been fairly quiet, and that's no coincidence. Jeff has always been a man of few words, but 
a whole lot of ambition, from what I've seen, and he has always been clear and transparent when speaking on his current workings. So for him to not be speaking is really because if he did, we wouldn't be hearing about Save Decay 2 development, we would be hearing about his next big team defining project. So it's clear Jeff and many within the team are onto the next title, if not the entire team. Whilst a smaller portion of the team works on both their next project, while still maintaining patches and updates for Save Decay 2. Jeff Strain once said, the team working on Save Decay 2 is four times the size of Save Decay 1. If we are to take this as factual and relevant information in a post Save Decay 2 world, then that means a majority of the team are with Jeff on the next project, lending a small part of their in-house resources to patches and updates where and when they are most necessary, and fit within the tight multi-year development schedule they find themselves within. Jeff Strain's and the early team's ambitious past shows that it's no surprise that they wanted to create an MMO, but not within the fantasy structure of Jeff's past endeavors, but instead in an apocalyptic end of days scenario that plays closer to a survival fantasy MMO more than just another MMO. Players working together in a beautiful world with not so beautiful problems. This concept was even announced and was in its late development for XBLA before the team transitioned from an MMO role-playing game into a single-player role-playing game. Game, no longer known as Class 3, but now known as Stave Decay. The early sod conception is still an open book with not much written in it, but the information is there to decipher and put together from interviews and articles spanning almost a decade. And I know that there is a deeper hidden structure here to the development schedule Undead Labs have been in since its conception and their first project. The concept of Class 3 morphed into the Stave Decay franchise. But what if I told you there was a Class 4? Well, there was a Class 4, which was also explained to be a zombie survival role-playing MMO, but the second go at this ambitious project also seemed to evolve and once again morph its way into full production of Stave Decay 2. Is the evolution of these classes a larger evolution to obtain true funding and acquire the necessary resource to create the early team's most wanted project, being this survival zombie fantasy MMO that only they knew the true breath of? And if they were willing to work up to this ambitious dream, what potential does this dream project have? What kind of genre-defining experience could lead this team on an almost decades-long escapade? Are these lost projects really lost within the development ether of the past? Or does Undead Labs see the potential of their idea and are willing to make it a reality at all costs? I believe personally that Class 3 and 4 are the remnants of a development cycle that codenames this ambitious endeavor, and the State of Decay franchise is almost the brainchild of a much older and even more insane idea. In the context of a survival survival fantasy MMO that truly is genre-defining. Really sit on what I'm about to say for just a minute and tell me this wouldn't be insane. A Stave Decay MMO. On the surface level, this may seem like a weird idea, but when you take the fundamental design of Sod and express that design in a world with more than a few players, with real dynamics in play, with resource and community management not being controlled by one player, but made into a real community effort by real players surviving and thriving together, allowing the best survivors to work to the top of community control. Undead Labs holds community in a very high regard, and I don't think this is just a coincidence. I think their idea has always been a player-driven zombie survival simulation experience, with real players making real decisions in more than just a cooperative effort. Decisions like, do we take this player into our community? Do we trust him? Do we go for this resource, or do we let our competition within other communities take our resource? This concept seems plausible to some length, and I see how something with this much ambition could send the team into a schedule that works towards a goal of creating it at all costs, and using their current IP as a primer and a controlled doorway into creating the game they always wanted to develop. And is the current state of the Sod franchise really just a simpler to develop asset flip from a much bigger and more ambitious Sod experience in development now? Because if they pull it off in the way I have explained throughout this piece, this could be one of the generation's most crazy development stories. Could an idea that seemed to be lost in the great development hell really actually be the missing puzzle piece to this yet to unravel story? I really don't know, but I think there is enough here to make a guess and to justify asking this question. 
what is Undead Labs doing? This is part one of this discussion, as this is only the beginning entry in a mission to unravel this unknown speculation. Thank you for listening, and your participation will further the discussion, and point towards a common consensus, that we can then discuss further with less unknown factors. So please let your voices be known, as I am one man that can only understand as much as one man can. <laughs> It's up to the community to decipher and try to lay down the most realistic roadmap for our fandom looking towards our future undead experiences. I believe I stated my best possible guess for the future and for the current unknown workings, and from here I need your help. So a huge thanks to those who stuck it through this intense episode of the coverage series, and to further this discussion, at a more grassroots level, please join the Gamescast Discord, which will be linked below. Hopefully, we can come to an understanding that the future is way more interesting and excitement-filled than I think I myself or anyone on the outside can understand. So I leave you with my thoughts. What's yours? I love y'all. Peace.